Hello everyone, greetings for the day. Welcome back to another tutorial on ISTQB. This is Nirish Kumar Singh and you are watching USD, ISTQB Foundation series. So today we will be talking about the completion of the chapter 1 and quickly looking at some of the sample questions from the chapter 1 which will just help you to understand your learning process and also help you to understand what typical types of question can be asked to you from the content which is being delivered. So uh, let's quickly move into that. Uh, we are having the very first question on the screen which is to ask you about the very first terminology so we have eight questions from this chapter team the distribution of the exam structure has been modified and at, at the end of each chapter when we come to the sample questions I'll be telling you the structure and number of questions which will be asked to you from each chapter so the first question here, which of the following provides the best description of the test case? And generally we know what test cases are and it is really easy to understand. But let's look at the options here. A document specifying a sequence of actions for the execution of a test, also known as test script or manual test script. Now, the reason is here, actions of uh, so sequence of actions are generally called as test procedures, not test cases. So A is eliminated. Let's look at B, a set of input values and expected result with execution precondition and execution post conditions developed for a particular test condition. Of course, this seems to be the most valid one, but before we look at C and D, we cannot do that. An attribute of system specification by requirement documentation, for example, reliability, usability or design constraint that is executed in a test. Now, team, a uh, test case is not about non-functional parameters. Non-functionals, we only have scenarios, not test cases. So, C could not be the most relevant compared to B. Uh, D, an, element, uh, an item or event of the system that could be verified by one or more test conditions. Example, function, transaction, feature, quality attribute, or structure element. And I think we don't have the relevant response here when compared to B. So, the final answer, I think the most relevant, you would also get it as B. And that's the answer for the description for a test case. The second one here is which of the following is major objective of testing. I think that's a straightforward on the first tutorial I told you it is to prevent defects. We look at B, uh, to validate the project plan works as required. Of course, project plan is the entire project detail, not the testing related. Okay. Uh, C, of course, it is to gain confidence, but not in the development team. So C is ruled out. D, to make a release decision for the system under test. No, you only provide information for decision making, but you don't make decisions. So I think the most relevant answer is A here, which is to prevent defects in the application. And that's one of our major objective. The third one here, which of the following is an example of a failure in a car cruise control system? Now team, here they can ask you any type of example which could be uh, you know taken from any real-time scenarios, but of course that would be something common which you use on your day-to-day -day life So car cruise control system is another easy thing to remember But let's look at it what exactly we have got here a developer of the system forgot to rename variable that a cut and paste operation So that is generally a root cause now we conduct failures in terms of experiencing in testing while executing test cases, as we know from the definition. But A seems to be a root cause analysis that is from debugging, not testing. B, unnecessary code that sounds an alarm when reversing was included in the system. C, the system stops maintaining a set speed when the radio volume is increased or decreased. Now, if you look at C option, seems to be a user experience when the tester is testing the application. But B it is again talking about unnecessary code. So the moment it comes to a debugging step, you see such things like unnecessary code, invalid algorithm, undefined variable. There's all debugging steps, not testing. And failure can only be observed in testing. Look at D. The design specification for a system wrongly states speed. Now that's again design, which would be only found by debugging. So finally, we have got the right answer as C here. That is uh, what a user can really experience or generally a tester can experience while testing the application and we call it as a failure. Question number four, which of the following is a defect rather than a root cause in a fitness tracker? Now the question remains the same, but this is how they just differently put the same thing to you. 
Now they just want to know the same thing that what is a failure and they would have given a root causes as well but the system is different now it is a fitness tracker because he was unfamiliar with the domain of fitness training the author of the requirement wrongly assumed that user wanted heartbeat in beats per hour the tester of the smartphone interface had not been trained in state transition testing so missed a major defect an incorrect configuration variable implemented for the gps function could cause location problems during daylight saving times and because she had never worked on wearable devices before the designer of the user interface misunderstood the effect of reflecting sunlights now if you see these options might look little tricky to you that how to differentiate a defect from the root cause but if you see here i've got a clear function here that an incorrect configuration variable implemented for gps function could cause location problems during daylight saving times now that is one of the defect but if you see all other things we have conducted a analysis and we have found that why is it happening so if you say a b d here a b d would help you to understand a scenario that we have already figured out that why was that de defect was happening like what was the root cause of it and exactly these are the root cause but c does not tell you that it is a root cause it only tells you that it is a problem so c is the right answer at this case number 5 as a result of risk analysis more testing is being directed to those areas of the system under test where initial testing found more defects than average so we are talking about defect density here which of the following testing principle is being applied beware of pesticide paradox testing is context dependent absence of error is a fallacy defect clustered together so i think all of you would have got it by now it's a straightforward thing that defect clustering is what is being discussed here that generally if you found some defect and we are looking forward to have more defects than average then we say this concept that there are defects which have clustered together but pesticide paradox deals with repetition context dependent means about strategy absence of error means about meeting the requirements so d is the right answer here six given the following test activities and task test design uh test implementation test execution test completion and there are certain tasks mentioned on the right side we just have to match the following and see what the best result could be possible here and uh, uh what we have here is to see that what activity happens at each stage so from the test process we know the activity is being conducted so let's highlight here the prioritizing the test procedure and querying the test data analyzing discrepancy to determine their cause so one thing is sure that uh, test execution is number 4 that is analyzing discrepancies to determine their cause test design is about test data test implementation is about identifying or uh, prioritizing the test procedures and uh, test completion is of course entering change request for the defect which remains open and from there we get one answer that is a so test design is identifying test data test implementation is prioritizing test procedures and execution is about uh, analyzing discrepancies that happens during the run time test fails you add defects and defects are being at analyzed during execution itself and then completion number 7 which of uh, the following best describes how value is added by maintaining traceability between the test basis and the test artifacts of course this was the last topic what we were talking about uh, like before the test process or uh, the psychology of testing so tutorial 4 you will uh, find the answer for this so maintenance testing can fully be automated automation of maintenance testing does not rely on traceability it is possible to determine if a new test case has increased coverage of the requirements yes that could that could be one of the reason for that c test manager can identify which tester found the highest severity defects and i think that's a discriminating a statement that you evaluate somebody's qualification or skill set based on the number of defects found and that's conflicting contradicting with the laws of testing procedures 
the areas that may be impacted by side effects of a change can be targeted by confirmation testing. So D, uh, they start with regression and they end with retesting and that could not be a good option. So I think the final answer we have got is B because as you add new test cases, of course, it has to help you measure that what better coverage has been achieved on the requirements when you add certain new test cases. And that can be achieved by traceability between the basis and the artifact created. The last one, number eight, which of the following quality is more likely to be found in a tester's mindset rather than in a developer's? So we were just talking about the same in the previous tutorial. So I think that should be again straightforward and easy to understand that it is B, ability to see what might go wrong will not be a developer's mindset. Experience on which to base their effort that everyone follows. C, good communication with team member that is common for everyone again, not specific to tester and attention to details. That's again common to everyone, no matter which team you belong to. But ability to see what might go wrong would be a special skill set required by the tester compared to anybody else. So anyways team, this is all what we have got from the sample questions. Hope you would have got an idea that how the things work in ISTQB from the learnings of each chapter. So we will be continuing the same for the other chapters as well. So stay tuned for upcoming tutorials. We'll be starting with chapter two uh, tomorrow. So stay tuned for it. Till then, keep uh, working, keep going through. In case you still have any more questions, you can always ask me in the comment box below. I'll help you to understand the right answer there and give you justification for the other options. If uh, you have not uh, uh, subscribed to the channel, please do subscribe. Following that, stay tuned, keep learning, and keep exploring about the same thing. So thanks for watching the video. Happy learning.